Welcome to the second episode of the Community Music Learning IJCM Conversation Series. My name is Alisa de Banfi Hall, and together with Roger Mantai, we are hosting the series. Today, we would like to introduce you to the International Journal of Community Music IJCM. Roger, what is the IJCM? Thanks, Alicia. Um, the IJCM is a scholarly journal for anyone interested in the field of community music, which is itself an interdisciplinary field that includes people involved in uh, things like music education, music therapy, applied ethnomusicology, and community development, among other fields. Um, a complete description of the uh, what we call the aims and scope of the journal can be found on its home page, and we'll include a link in here. How did the journal come about? The journal came about in response to what I think is that it was considered a perceived need uh, for an outlet for people doing research on all the amazing community music activity that had been occurring over the past few decades. Uh, the journal started out very briefly as an online publication, uh, sort of an open access thing, but then it was adapted and adopted by uh, Intellect Publishing in 2007, uh, one of the smaller publishing companies uh, that that is known primarily for uh, taking chances on emerging disciplinary fields such as community music. And there you go, uh, 20 years later, and we're no longer an emerging field. I'd like to find out more about how the journal works. So the editorial board, can you tell us more about who's in it and how you get to be on it and how and who uh, uh, chooses who to get who gets on it? Um, how does that all work? Well, that's a great question because I, I think that that a lot of people familiar with academic publishing may have uh, similar questions. So as with virtually any other reputable scholarly journal, IJCM has a board, an editorial board. Uh, this, for our journal, it consists of about 20 to 25 scholars and practitioners uh, who help to ensure that the scholarly content published in the journal is of the highest possible quality, uh, both in terms of content and in terms of ethical standards. Uh, the current board has representatives from, uh, I think it's 10, maybe 11 countries, um, and for a long time, uh, the board had not changed. And so a few years ago, we restructured how the board operates. And uh, we started to adopt practices that are pretty common in other journals. So board members now commit to a six-year term with approximately one-third of the board rotating off every two years. Uh, this way, we're able to welcome new voices uh, while maintaining continuity over time. Um, so recently, we put out a public call for members, uh, social media and other uh, forums, uh, in order to replace those members whose terms expired at the end of 2023. Uh, the editorial uh, team then evaluated all the applications, aiming to ensure that the board reflects the field in as many ways as possible, um, but of course balancing out such things as as geography, gender, culture, experience, and and so on. Can you give us examples of what kind of areas um, are covered in the journal? IJCM publishes regular issues uh, that contain a, a range of general research and scholarship on community music, uh, but I think one of the ways for listeners and viewers to get a sense uh, of of the issues is maybe to look at the special issues of the journal. Uh, and it's not completely consistent, but it, we usually publish around one special issue a year. Uh, so to date, we've published uh, about 24 special issues on a variety of topics. Um, these include such things as like criminal justice or music and leisure, community music therapy, uh, and our most recent special issue was busking in community music. So it kind of gives you a sense of the range and, and depth of issues we cover. And what would you say is the vision of the journal? I'm not sure the journal has a really specific vision per se, but I think when Lee Higgins started the journal, his vision was that it would help to create a critical mass of research to help establish community music as a, a scholarly field in its own right. And I believe, I mean, based on, on our over 20 years to date, that this vision has actually been achieved. Uh, my own vision for the journal is to see it become an even greater resource uh, uh, for people and a greater source of influence on the field. Uh, and by that, 
what I mean is I'm hoping the journal can help inform the field by providing, uh, let's say, research-informed insights into how community music can evolve and adapt to our changing world in ways that are, uh, let's say, ethically and professionally responsible. And what would you say is different or special about the International Journal of Community Music in comparison to other journals? We probably can't claim to be completely unique in that we are an academic journal, but I have always thought that one of the hallmarks of the journal has been its sensitivity to the relationship uh, between, let's say, the field of practice and the merits of inquiry. Uh, I think this is especially important for a relatively small field like community music. Uh, the journal, I think, has been an amazing incubator for encouraging practitioners and researchers to think about the real-world implications of our practices. Um, Rather than just assume that we're doing good work, for example, uh, the curiosity and criticality of research and scholarship uh, helps to create a more responsible field, I think. Um, many other journals don't necessarily have to worry about such things because they've been in existence for a long time. And who's the audience of the journal? Who is it for? And who do you think it might be interesting for who might not know about it yet? I mean, the immediate audience is quite obviously, anyone who might be interested in community music activity. Um, but uh, given that it's an interdisciplinary field, I think it hopefully has an appeal to anyone in a sort of an adjacent area, such as music education or community music therapy or any of the fields uh, that that it sort of intersects with. Um And, you know, I would like to think uh, that it's interesting for almost anyone who's interested in musical participation, uh, because if we think about uh, the general notion of, of uh, musical participation that is open to all people and for all people, uh, I think anyone interested uh, hopefully will find something of interest in the pages of the journal. And uh, geographically, I think I remember that there were issues in different languages. Am I right? Have, have there been individual issues published in Chinese, maybe? Or if I remember right? Yeah, there, there was the special issue in Chinese, uh, Mandarin. Um, uh, and the journal does have, it has published a few special issues on uh, a variety of geographic uh, scopes, such as you know, Scandinavia or community music in Germany, as you might know well. We have an upcoming issue on community music in Italy. Um, but I will say that not unlike a lot of academic publishing, uh, the journal does publish primary in, primarily in English, which is, as we know, uh, kind of an ongoing issue throughout academic uh, scholarship. Um, it's, a, it's a difficult one to, to crack. Uh, you know, the journal has people subscribing from... I don't know how many countries, I mean, it's it's tons, uh, you know, let's say a couple dozen countries. Um, but it is difficult to expand subscriptions because, you know, intellect as the publisher, they need to balance out a, a variety of, of, of considerations, uh, you know, because they, they're a small publisher, they can't operate at a loss, for example. And the last question, tell us how people can access the journal. Well, again, that is an ongoing tension because it is a paid subscription journal, uh, although many uh, many people uh, with academic affiliations can can get it through their institution. Uh, but you know, intellect is a very ethical publisher, and you know they have they have a program uh, called um, uh, Research for Life. Uh, we can post a link uh, in terms of the eligibility. In other words, it will make its journal open to um, a variety of constituencies, either geographically or on, on a kind of uh, uh, equity-deserving basis. Um, and so, for example, there's there are currently 82 countries that have free access um, and 43 countries uh, currently that have low-cost access. Access is always an issue, but for people that are interested, if, if you reach out uh, to, to me or the other uh, co-editors, I think there's always a way for us to, to try and get the IJCM into as many hands as possible. Yeah, and I think that program sounds amazing. That's a lot of countries who would have either low cost or free access. And it's probably not that known about. I, I never knew about it until we spoke about it. Exactly. I know. We need, to, we need to publicize that so that people can take advantage of that. It's a great program. All right. Well, thank you, Roger. And thank you for listening to the Community Music Learning IJCM Conversations second episode.